Hello, so in this video, I wanted to share with you some of the things that we're teaching my son about money and finances. Um, a couple of goals that we have, one is just, it takes time for money to grow. So we want our little guy to start using his money well when he's little, so that it's gonna serve him best when he's older. We also want to help our son develop a healthy relationship with money. We have experienced financial pitfalls ourselves, um, things that we would love for our son to not go through. And also one of the professional hats that I wear is I'm a stress reduction instructor. And oh my goodness, the relationship that people have with money can end up deciding their quality of life, their length of life. When we're stressed out about our finances, it can make us sick. It can shorten the number of days we get on this planet. I want my son to have a long life, a high quality of life, and I know that his relationship with money is very much going to be a part of that. So I'm trying to teach him grown-up skills, things that will help him throughout his lifetime, um, it, but in a way that he can start to pick that up now. He's two and a half years old, and we started doing this when he was two, um, and hopefully he's just going to keep grabbing onto more and more of it. Um, in fact, every time we do this exercise, he does grab onto more and more of it, which I'm really excited about. That's why I want to share it with you. Here we go. So I'd like to introduce you to Pig. Pig is the piggy bank that he got for Christmas. And uh, that was right around when he was two. And if anybody gives him a gift for birthdays, Christmas, and it's in the form of a check, we deposit the check and we put it directly into his RESP reason for it. He's two, he doesn't need anything. He does not need more toys. He doesn't need fancy stuff for his room. He's happiest when he's digging in sand at the park and hitting a tree with a stick. So we're putting the money aside that was given in a check. And then uh, for his second birthday, we asked people, if you want to give a gift, instead of giving toys and all the stuff that's just going to pile up around the house and make him stressed, we don't need piles of things. We asked, if you have any loose change, bring that as a gift and he can put that in pig. Um, it meant at the end of his birthday, he sat on the floor putting coins in his pig for about 20 minutes. He was the happiest kid ever. He loved it. So whether they are given to him as gifts or if he finds loose change on the sidewalk, things like that, every now and then what we do is we crack open pig and we look for things that are in sets of 10. So if he has 10 quarters, 10 nickels, 10 dimes, as soon as we know that he has 10 of something, then that means that we're ready to bust out the folio. Now the folio, this is just something that is old and beaten up. I used it for work and didn't need it anymore. You can find something like this at a dollar store or a stationery or office supply store, though the office supply store will be more expensive. Um, and the reason that we got it is because it's a box that's filled with large envelopes or tabs, um, pockets essentially, and they're a great fit for this particular system. I'll walk you through what we do with his sets of 10 coins. So what we wanted to do was teach him about breaking down his money in percentages, but percentage, that's way too complicated a concept for him at two. So how do we help him build up to that? How could we explain it now at the age of two and a half? Um, well, we wrote down things in the order of priority. How do you break down your money? Here's step one, step two, step three. Um, and instead of making a percentage, we wait till we have 10 so that we can do, you know, a number of this, a number of that, etc. Let me show you. First stop, we want our son to know, first thing to keep in mind when you receive money, be thankful. Um, there are a lot of people that do not have what we have and there are people, you know, scraping, you know, by day by day. Um, the fact that we have the resources we have is something to be very thankful and grateful for. Now, how you explain this to your child will probably depend very much on your faith background. Um, for us, I, believing that Jesus Christ is Lord, you know, he's who he is, uh, who he said he is. Um, we honestly believe that, well, you know, we have what we have because God gave it to us. It's not ours to begin with. Be thankful. Um, share it with others. And so 10% is set aside. So one out of 10, one quarter goes in there. And what we're trying to teach our son is that, you know, pray about it. You know, ask God, where do you want me to give this? And then give it away. Um, that's a way of being thankful and whatever your faith background is, maybe you believe in what goes around comes around or karma. Being thankful is a sound financial principle to teach children. It's a great priority to have and something to say, be thankful first rather than leaving it as a, I did everything else and now with the money I have left over, I can share that. Be thankful first. Next one, retirement. 
Um, we're trying to teach our son that, you know what, he'll spend times in his life earning money, but he doesn't want to rely on his ability to earn money to survive. There is going to be a time in his life where that's just not going to work out for him or it's not going to be ideal. You don't always want to rely on your ability to earn money. And I did a ton of research looking into what do prosperous individuals teach their children about money. Just, you know, what does a millionaire or a billionaire teach their kid? And this consistent theme kept popping up. And it was suggesting when kids are young, they don't need things. Stop buying them stuff. Put a huge percentage of their money away for future long-term savings and investment. So looking at the numbers that they were recommending, we settled on 40%. And so that means that four of these quarters get set aside for my son's retirement. There we go. Next one, emergencies. Teaching him that there are going to be times in life where just you get surprised. Something happens, you weren't expecting it. And so it's good to have a little bit of money set aside for those times when things go wrong. And so 10% goes in there. Next one, big dreams. There are things that are worth saving up for that it's gonna cost more money. And so things like buying a house, I would love, I've met individuals but because they started saving when they were really young, their money grew. These people were buying houses at age 18, 19. I would love that for my son. So big dreams, you know, what does he want to get? Um, is he going to need a car? Just whatever it is, a, he wants to go on a trip. What are the big things? Save it for it now, 10%, there we go. And then the last one is spending. Sorry, my fingers are in the way there. Spending, and that's 30%. So his last three quarters go into that pocket. And what we're trying to teach him about spending uh, is that spending is for buying something of quality. Um, really, really, and back to, I understand, you know, take or leave, you know, what I'm sharing. Uh, this may not be a good fit for your family, but the language that we're using is we're telling your child, you know, buy things of value, don't buy crap. Um, I understand that for some people, crap is a nothing word. That's very much what it's like in our context. For other people, that might be a swear word, so you would use a different word. The ultimate message we're trying to communicate to them is don't buy things that don't hold their value. When you are done with something, you should be able to put it on Kijiji or you should be able to, you know, sell it get most of the value back and invest that into the next thing that you want. We want him to know you don't need very many toys. Choose the things that you know you really enjoy. Focus on those things. When you're done, sell them and then invest in the next toy. He should not be drowning in crap. So many people are drowning in crap. So he has a couple of nice toys. And just so you know, I'll share this story with you. Um, with the money that he had saved up, he loves the Renegades uh, X Ambassadors lyrics video. If you've ever seen that, it's the lyrics and then it's a guy on a skateboard at night skateboarding around a small town. My kid is obsessed with that video. He loves it. And anytime a skateboarder has gone past us, then he's just stopped and stared. So there's been evidence. Okay, dude, you are really interested in skateboarding. That's awesome. Okay, well, let's take a look at getting you a skateboard. Because he was so excited about it, um, we worked with him. And again, just a reminder, he's two and a half. Um, we worked with him putting a tricycle that he didn't ride anymore up on Kijiji. When the person came to buy it, my son was standing right there and he was the seller. And so he was the person who handed over the tricycle, accepted the money, said thank you. Um, and he got to put that money into his folder. Um, we've taught him when he sells a toy, then that can just go straight into spending. It's like his spending money coming back to him. It's not something that he earned or a gift that he received. Um, in the end, he saved up $47 from loose change and from selling other toys that he had that he didn't need. And he was able to pay for a huge chunk of his skateboard. Now, the rest of the skateboard, my husband and I did cover. That was a partial gift from us. Um, but he could get it when he was able to contribute a reasonable amount of money towards it. And so obviously as you go along, you're going to figure it out, but this system is working so well for our family and my son, I really, 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 um, am excited to see how he is grabbing onto more of it as we go along. Does he get all of it? No. Is it a slightly squirrely process? 
Heck yes, but he keeps getting stronger every time. And I'll let you know our next step. That retirement pocket is starting to fill up with money, just like his saving, uh, sorry, his spending folder was. Um, so we're getting ready to uh, help him go to the bank. And we have learned from our particular bank that their services are garbage. Uh, it turns out that the youth accounts, they don't earn any interest. So it's just like a giant institutional piggy bank which sucks. So we're going to do a little bit more research and either help him to go in so he can uh, go into a bank and he can deposit his money into his RESP with us there. Um, or my husband and I are taking a look at helping to set up an RRSP for him. Um, if you set up an RRSP for your child, there's no age restriction. It just means as soon as you start one, then you have to have to start filing taxes. Um, there's so many free tools out there that to file taxes for your two or three year old because they now have an RRSP, it's going to be super simple. So you can actually take money that your kids set aside for retirement and put it into a retirement fund. Um, you have options. We're going to go on a field trip so that he's actually able to deliver the money that he's thankful uh, for. So you know, see somebody who's in need and hand it off to them. This folder opens up so many opportunities for interacting with money in a healthy way, getting to see where it goes, learning about how to navigate a bank, just all sorts of different things. So we're excited. What are you doing for your kids? I would love to know. Are there any tools that you're using, any mentalities that you're trying to ingrain in them? Um, what kind of relationship do you want your kids to have with money? Please share that in the comments. And if you found any value in this particular video, um, please you know share in the comments or share with a friend. And be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be posting more videos from my squirrely thoughts. <laughs> um, and just, yeah, try to have a bunch of good things on here to help parents out. And I'm always really excited when you share back. So thanks. I hope you have a great day. All the best. Bye.